Colleagues, firstly, I think it's important for me, on behalf of the Open Estate, to highlight to you the fact that they face several risks, which, although everyday issues for the rest of us, place staff who work in the Open Estate at particular risk simply because they don't have the resources we have. They do not have the resources we have. They have similar risks. In fact, some, some of the open estate that I've been into, you know, they've got some very tasty individuals in there who, if they chose to misbehave, uh, open estate colleagues would find it very, very difficult to deal with them. So I want us all to be mindful of that. Um, the NEC continue to press for our colleagues in the open estate to access, access the same level of equipment that we have. Um, we all know conference policy and we'll continue to pursue um, greater levels of safety for our colleagues in the Open Estate. I chaired the Open Estate Committee meeting that was held on the 9th of August at Sudbury and 16 branches were invited, unfortunately, due to the usual annual leave, uh, the pandemic, the, the, there's all, unfortunately, they couldn't all attend. Um, Kirkham, North Sea Camp, Sudbury, Askham Grange and Prescode were able to attend. And I started the meeting off by inviting one of the retired members to come and talk about what um, retired colleagues in the Open Estate could expect from the Retired Members Committee, and I think it went down really well. <clears throat> I'm going to go th quickly through the agenda that was raised, because these were matters that were raised on behalf of our colleagues in the Open Estate. Um, it will come as no surprise to you that staffing levels came first. Subbury highlight the issue of staffing levels and they indicated that staffing levels had been good during the pandemic. However, now that regime is progressing, they're exper experiencing staffing difficulties in exactly the same way as everybody else. Most branches indicated they are experiencing the same problems with staff going off duty for whatever reason, and the gaps are not allowed to be backfilled with Payment Plus. Difficulties with the lack of consultation at Sudbury regarding profiles and RMPs were discussed, and that's a, that's a problem nationally. Some, pro some progress had been made, and, it, and they hope that that would be resolved uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, HMP Kirkham assisted by telling Sudbury about changes that they can make to the core day that might assist, and it's something they've done successfully at Kirkham. Discussions took place surrounding areas uh, around operational capacity in the open estate, and it was emphasised that establishments should be given extra staff for these increases, and I'm going to go over that in a second. It's imperative that branches push for this, and this should be done using the health and safety risk assessment, safe system of work, violence diagnostic tool, and your regime management plan. Uh, Leigh Hill asked for the issue of band four roles to be raised and asked about the crossover where there's band four roles that have the same work in the band four and the band three job spec, and that was done in order to protect band fours. Um, it was pointed out at the meeting, and, and some of the other uh, branches in the open estate were very helpful. It was pointed out that it was an increased reliance on band force to do the act work following the introduction of version six, and there's also other work. Uh, we spoke about the fire safety regs and the requirement for prisoners' property to be compliant with the fire safety regs, and then we spoke about how that could assist with the business case to improve staffing in reception. It was talked about and it was raised around operational stability, uh, about prisoners' behaviour deteriorating. So if a prisoner's behaviour deteriorates and we're in a closed prison, we've got a way of dealing with that. Imagine the difficulties in the open estate. And, and, and you know, just to go back to the original point, they face a number of challenges that are everyday issues for us, but not for those guys and girls that work in there. The NEC continue to push for extendable buttons in the open estate, but what I want to say, colleagues, is I want to make a general point about you feeding back to the NEC when we ask you for information. We get now for opinions, zero, null point for an opinion. If we go to the employer with reams and reams and reams of evidence, then we've got a chance on your behalf to move conference policy. The employer will listen to your evidence when you present it to us. If we go in with nothing other than an opinion, or one or two branches, you're narrowing our, our opportunities to progress matters on your behalf. So please, 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 when we come and ask you, and I know the National Chairman's mentioned it, and I think the General Secretary has also today, it's really important, please don't ignore a request, our request to you for information, because that's how we'll progress some of these matters. The ongoing issue of incorrect categorisation is a ma massive challenge for the open estate and one that I would ask everybody here with any influence to assist with by working together and sharing information in the good old, bad old days. 
we had the opportunity, didn't we, of making sure the categorisation was correct uh, and we could influence that through the OCA. I, I know that's narrowed down a little bit, but please, if you can, try and make sure that the people that we send into the open estate are the people that, that are going to fit in. Um, it's not the case at the moment. We then went on to talk about profiling and future regimes and regime management plans. I'm going to quickly cover what we spoke about. It was explained that before an establishment can progress its regime, adequate consultation should take place. And this would include an agreed regime management plan. And it was advised that branches don't agree to the progression. They should indicate this on the engagement stroke consultation log, because that's the bit that provides us the evidence. If you haven't got one, please, when you go back, start your engagement, your consultation log, because when you come to the NEC with, the, with your issues, that should be our starting point so we can read what has been said and what has been discussed. Principles of fair and sustainable were discussed, and that goes back earlier to new work being introduced. So let me just remind everybody what they are. We identify the work. All work sits within a job spec. Identify the grade, or we jazz the new work. Then we provide the resources, or we reprofile, so we take work out and put new work in, and then we deliver the work. And establishments are asked to think how this work will influence the RMP in the future regime and about how this will uh, progress in the green, green, amber, red, amber, and the red states. Most of the, the, most of the open estate only have three operational states. They've got so few staff, and, which just goes over what I spoke about earlier. We also spoke about what we're going to do going forward. Uh, and one of the things, and a strap line that I know our colleagues have stolen off me, but this is mine, hope is not a strategy. Yeah, we don't, if, if we live on hope, we get nowhere. We have to, we have to plan. 2017, we agreed the RMP, which includes the 10-day the, the planning meeting. We spoke about that. Uh, when I ask the question why we don't hold the planning meeting, I'm often told we can't do it or it's impossible. And the reason for that, and let me ask, let me, let me just point something out to your colleagues. The reason people don't think they can plan far enough ahead is because when you go into your detail offices, they're all sat looking out the window. And do you know why they sat looking out the window? I'll tell you now. They're all waiting for a 48-seater bus to turn up with 48 band threes to fill the gaps for the non-effective you're never going to get the staff for. Yeah? So when you go and talk to your managers, they say it's impossible. What you've got to do is take your additional non-effective off the top of your staffing numbers, and that becomes what you can reasonably deliver on a permanent basis. And when you do that, you take them away from the window and you let them get back to doing the work and, and providing the detail and the plan for two weeks ahead. And we spoke about that at that meeting. And even today, when I go in some of my jails, I walk in the detail office, they're all sat looking out the window. That coach is not going to turn up. We've pressed for that as an NEC, for the additional non-effective for all to be paid for. I know that our employer have. We're not going to get the money for it, colleagues, so we have to live in the real world. My advice to you all is to focus on having a policy compliant RMP with all the bells and whistles. And should you have any problem with it, come to your NEC area rep. We can run workshops. I'm, I've just been asked while well, I've been sat here to do one for Deerbolt on the 3rd of December. An RMP workshop, it's five hours. A workshop for the SMT, a workshop for the CMs. We can do all that for you. We can come and do that to support you looking at future regimes. Finally, colleagues, I intend to hold a face-to-face -face meeting with the Open Estate sometime in December or early 2022. In the time-honoured way, I'll ask the attendees to set the agenda and then we'll have a little bit of a workshop, possibly around the 10-day planning meeting and about how, how to flex a regime. And that's me done, but before I step away, probably the last time I'll speak to you before Christmas, I want to take this opportunity to wish you all and your families, give you all my best wishes for the festive season. Thank you. Thank you.